Hey guys, welcome back to another midweek study. Tonight we are going to be in Psalms chapter 6. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up there. And remember, while you're opening your Bible, be sure to turn off the TV, to close the laptops, to put away the phones, to put away the toys, whatever it is that can distract us. We want to eliminate distractions as much as possible and just give these few minutes to the Lord. Focus on Him. Give Him the respect and the reverence that He deserves, right? So while you guys are turning there, I'll just give you guys a few announcements. We are back in person for church. Sunday mornings, we've got our 9 and 11 o'clock services. And remember, there will be social distancing, so you don't have to worry about getting too close to people. This is kind of more information for the parents. Um, it's family style, so there won't be children's ministry, but kids are still welcome. There will be um, you know, activity bags for them with snacks and activities and stuff for them to do to keep them occupied while the sermon is going. We will still be uploading these videos. Um, that's for Sunday morning and then also Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we're going to still have our 6.30 p.m. service. So again, if you uh, can come out, if you can make it out, we would love to see you. If not, we understand. But I just want to make that quick announcement. So let's pray and then we'll dive into this psalm. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time, God. We thank you for the fact that you hear our prayers, God. As we're going to see here in this chapter, David is in a place where he is afraid. He is sorrowful. He is begging for the Lord's help, and it feels like you are so far away. But the truth is you're never far from us, God. The truth is that you are close to us. The truth is that you hear our prayers, Lord God. So be with us tonight. Bless us. Bless this teaching, God. Help these kids to understand and to focus. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, chapter 6, Psalms. Let me pull up my verses really quick. There we go. Psalm chapter 6, a prayer of faith in time of distress. And that really does sum up what this chapter is going to be. So to the chief musician with stringed instruments on an eight-stringed harp, a psalm of David. Remember, this was a song. This was a song that David sang. Remember, David was a great musician. You know, he wrote and sang many, many songs. Um, you know, pretty much most of the book of Psalms is our songs that David wrote to the Lord in praise. We're going to see here in distress. This is like a prayer that David is giving to God saying, God, I'm afraid. God, I'm scared. God, I need your comfort and I need you to help me and to see me through this. So we're going to see here that there are all different kinds of psalms. This is a, like the title says, a prayer of faith in time of distress. So with that being said, um, also before we jump in, just remember, if, you, if we are ever in a time of distress, if we are ever in a time, and uh, distress basically just means fear, um, it just means pressure, um, a time where something bad is happening and we really are crying out to the Lord, wanting him to help. That's what a time of distress is. And this is an instance where we might not be in that place right now. I think a lot of people these days are in that place. Uh, maybe you know people who are in that sort of mode of distress. And that's why it's important to know this psalm. It's important to know the words in this psalm because it not only is it going to encourage us, say, hey, David was in times like these and he made it through, God saw him through, but also we're going to see at the end of this chapter, what is the solution for when we are in these times of stress? So let's jump into it. Let's read the first three verses. Oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled, but you, O Lord, how long? So guys, David is in a place where he feels like he is being punished. Maybe David has done something wrong here that he feels like God is punishing him. And guys, he starts off by saying, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. Guys, this is the image of a parent disciplining their child, right? Chastisement, it's like a spanking. It's like discipline. It's like a timeout. It's like what your parents do when you do something that disobeys their instructions. They discipline you because they love you, because they want you to see the error of your ways, and they want you to turn and to change. So David is crying out to God here saying, God, don't. 
And as a child, we tell our parents, don't, don't spank me. Don't put me in timeout. I don't want to. But ultimately, overall, it's for the betterment of that kid. I don't know how many times I got in trouble for doing something and I didn't want to get spanked. I didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't want to get on a in a timeout, whatever it was. I didn't want to get grounded. And I begged my parents, don't ground me, don't ground me, don't do it. But I know now, looking back, it was good that they disciplined me because that's how I learn and that's how I grow. And so David is in the same place where he's like a young child and God is his parent and he's begging God, God, this is hard. I don't want to be, ch I don't want, you know, and who knows, maybe it's just people coming against David, whatever it is. We see later on that there's some sort of evil force coming against David and he thinks that it's God's allowing it because of his sin and that may be the case. And so he's crying out to God. And he's basically begging him to help him. He goes on in verses four and five. Return, O Lord, deliver me. O save me from your mercy's sake. For in death, there is no remembrance of you in the grave. Who will give you thanks? So David also feels like the Lord's not hearing his prayers. He feels like the Lord is so far off. He's saying, return, O Lord, come back. Well, guys, the truth is that the Lord never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And David knows that. And we'll see here by the end of the chapter that David remembers the promises that God has given him and it actually fills him with peace. But right now he's letting his emotions sort of take over. And we can get in that place too, where our emotions take over and we, you know, our, our, our sight goes off of the Lord. And we start to think that he's not hearing our prayers when in reality he is hearing our prayers. He cares for us and he is listening. And verse five, he says, for in death, there's no remembrance of you in the grave. Who will give you thanks? Basically he's saying, God, if I die, how am I going to give you praise? He's trying to bargain with God. That doesn't work with God. He's saying, God, keep me alive. How else am I going to praise you? That bargaining doesn't work with God because the truth is that in death, there is a remembrance of God because you're either remembering that you forsook God in hell or you're remembering that you accepted Christ as your savior in heaven. He goes on in six and seven. I am weary with my groaning all night. I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with my tears. My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows old because of my enemies. And I, I think we've all been in this position, right? Where we are so sorrowful, whether it's a fight with friends, um, issue within the family, um, something at school that's going on. Maybe you just got in trouble for, for doing something that you shouldn't have been doing. We've all had these moments where we are just crying so much that our eyes hurt because we're so sorrowful over what's going on. And that's where David is right here. And guys, you and me both know that when we're in that state, we're not always thinking straight. We're not always remembering the promises of God. And that's what David is doing here. We're seeing that he's not remembering the promises of God. He's not remembering that when God rebukes you, it's good. That we should not be angry that God rebukes us, but we should actually be grateful when God rebukes us. He's also not re remembering that the Lord will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He's also not remembering that death is just an instant and then we're with the Lord for eternity. But notice here in verses 8 through 10, it all comes back. The Lord hears his prayers and the Lord reminds him of the promises that God has given him. In verses eight through 10, it says, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. That means my begging. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them turn back and be ashamed suddenly. So what is David saying here? He's realizing the truth. And the truth is that God is hearing our prayers, that God does hear when we weep, that God is a father who's compassionate towards us, who loves us, who wants to help us. David's remembering those promises that God has given us. And guys, this Psalm is an instance of one of those promises we need to remember. And all the Psalms that we've been reading, right? We've been reading about these Psalms, about the things that David has gone through and how time and time again, God has heard his prayer. If David just remembered those chapters, 
he would know. And that's what happens here is the Lord brings it to his remembrance and he remembers that the Lord is with me. And guys, that's so important. No matter how dark the world gets around us, no matter how scary it seems like things are around us, we need to remember important things. One, that God is trying to grow us. He's trying to raise us. He's trying to correct us at times. That God is merciful towards us. That he has a plan for us. That God will never leave us. And that if the worst thing happens, which is death, that even that worst thing, when we've placed our faith in Jesus, it just becomes nothing. It just becomes a blink of the eye. And then we're with Jesus forever. And guys, that is why it's so important to know that Jesus Christ is your Savior. It's so important to know in your heart that Jesus saved us from our sins. And here's what you need to know. You need to know, one, that Jesus is God. That Jesus was born. That he lived a perfect life. He didn't sin once. That he died on the cross for our sins. And that he resurrected from the dead three days later. Because when he did that, he proved to us that he could save us. I use this image sometimes of a life, a life, um, a lifeguard, right? You don't trust a lifeguard to save you if your lifeguard can't swim, right? If your lifeguard can't swim and he dives in to save you, you guys are both drowning, right? We can't trust Jesus to save us from the dead if he didn't conquer death. But guess what? He did conquer death. And since a lifeguard can swim and they can swim well. We can trust them to save us. And since Jesus conquered death and he never sinned, we know that he can conquer sin, death, and Satan in our life as well. And guys, that is the hope that we need to hold on to. The hope that he hears us, that he loves us, he has a plan for us, he's not far from us, and that he will help us through what we go through. Guys, that is so important and I hope you remember that tonight. If you forget everything else, remember that when we are in times of distress, times of stress, times of fear, times of anger, times of sadness, He hears our prayers. Prayer, pray to your Father in heaven. Lift up your voice to your Father in heaven because He cares for you and He hears. So, with that being said, let's pray. Let's wrap it up. Just in case you're wondering, I was doing some painting today, so I've got paint on my hand. I just saw that in the uh, video. But anyway, let's pray and let's close for tonight. Dear Lord, we thank you for this night. We thank you that you are never far from us, that you hear our prayers, that you care for us, that you are a loving father who wants to help us, God. Have mercy on us. Hear our prayers, Lord God. Watch over us, protect us. Be with us tonight, God. Be with each and every one of these kids, God. Help them to remember these things we learned about. Help them to go out with confidence and with strength, knowing that you are with them, that you are watching over them. We pray these things and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I will hopefully see you guys at church. If I don't get to see you guys at church, I will see you next week in our next video. Hopefully we can have children's ministry soon. I look forward to that. Anyway, love you guys, praying for you, and I hope you guys have a good week. See you later.